Shelton, and the title of my project this year is Taking It One Shot at a Time. I'm sure all of you have noticed how expensive broadheads are anymore. This year, for a pack of three broadheads, I had to pay $50, and each broadhead broke on the first shot of shooting the deer. This was completely useless. As a matter of fact, I have it right here. I hung it up here so that way it wouldn't fall and hurt anybody, but look at that. That is completely and totally mangled, useless for hunting purposes. So, I that's basically $20 per broadhead because it's $50 and there's three broadheads in there. So that's almost $20 per broadhead. Well, after that, it's like, okay, that's way too much money. So the purpose of my study this year was to find a broadhead, to find the most durable broadhead out there. So the way I did that was I examined the durability of the edge on an arrow broadhead from four different manufacturers. I looked up from manufacturers and I emailed the most the ones that had claims to being very durable and also very accurate. And then after I received the broadheads, each was individually fired into a deer's rib cage until the broadhead would no longer sink to lethal penetration depth. Now, for the purposes of this study, I define lethal penetration depth to be about two to three inches below the rib cage. So about two to three inches. On average, a deer's lungs sit about two to three inches below the rib cage. So if it's not sinking two to three inches, then it's not going to kill that deer, and if it is just sinking two to three inches, it's not going to kill it either because it's just barely going to penetrate the first lung. So for the purpose of this study, I define lethal penetration depths to be two to three inches. Now, based upon my limited experience, I haven't been bow hunting forever, I postulated that five shots from my Parker Challenger crossbow would render the broadhead too dull for hunting purposes. Again, too dull, no longer capable of penetrating to lethal depth, two to three inches. I also hypothesized that as the broadhead became more and more dull and sank less and less, the edge would become thicker and thicker on the blade. And the way I found out whether or not that was true is I used a scanning electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope uses a focused electron beam that shines down on an object and allows me to visually observe the many different things. What I looked at was the edge of a broadhead and it allowed me to measure it down to the nearest nanometer. It was amazing. It's got a lot of these pictures here. And like I said, if you want to see any of those pictures, put a request in the comment section below and I will, I will get those to you. But anyway, so now I've given you the abstract, my hypothesis, and a little bit of how I did this project. Let me go ahead and give you my conclusions on this project. So I would like to talk individually about each broadhead. There were four of them. The first one was the Sonic Bolt broadhead. The Sonic Bolt broadhead was made by the All American, or yeah, the All American Broadhead Company. Uh, they sent it to me very graciously. It was a big donation. I really appreciated it. Um, and I highly recommend their broadhead. It did. It only survived 13 shots before it, it was no longer sank to lethal depth. But it was extremely accurate. Definitely recommend that broadhead. If you're a precise shooter that likes to take those distance shots, then definitely get the Sonic Bolt broadhead and add that to your quiver because you'll be glad you did. The second broadhead was the Carbon Express broadhead. Now, it did 16 shots before it became no longer lethal. What I wanted to mention about that was I actually already had the pack before I started the project. So this was a purchase I made. And it cost me about $10 for the purchase. That's pretty cheap. And even still, it survived 16 shots. So I'd like to say, if you're looking for a good bargain, you can go ahead with the Carbon Express. They make some pretty good broadheads. Um, the, the third broadhead I tested was the Wasp Archery Boss broadhead, is what they called it. Now, that broadhead actually had a chisel tip on it. And chisel tips are more found on uh, bow broadheads. And I thought, well, wait a minute. You know, bow broadheads aren't supposed to go with crossbows. And so I decided to look into that. Somebody had actually requested that I did. So I went and looked into it. And what a lot of companies were claiming is that they use steel alloy and aluminum alloy. Well, I had two different broadheads that were made of steel and aluminum. And I fired it from my crossbow, and it did not appear to make any difference. I did a little more research and found out that most companies just slap the name crass, cr crossbow on the package and charge more for it. Now, some of them are justified. You know, they'll, they'll have the, the crossbow broadheads made, you know, heavier. But at any rate, you can still use a bow broadhead on a crossbow. But since some crossbow broadheads are made heavier, I would not suggest using a crossbow broadhead on a bow broadhead. Just bow on crossbow. So I just thought I'd let you guys know about that. And then the last broadhead would be our, oh, by the way, Wasp Archery did 25 shots before it was no longer, um, 
lethal. Then the last broadhead. Now this this broadhead right here was impressive, guys. I've got some stuff I want to show you after this presentation. Stinger Buzz Cut Four it was so durable. It lasted 45 shots. After 45 shots, I said, you know what? No one's going to shoot the same broadhead 45 times. So unless another broadhead passes 45, I'm just going to end it here. No other broadhead came even close to 45. So, and then I, I was so impressed with the broadhead that I continued to fire it once into a heavy-duty metal can, once into a frying pan, and then once into a pressure cooker that had walls of aluminum a half of an inch thick. And it penetrated, went completely through each one, and not only that, there was not even a ding in the blade. I showed you a picture at the beginning of the video of each broadhead. That, that last one there, that was the Magnus broadhead, and yeah, it did not even get dinged by hitting the metal, not even a little bit. So what does that mean for you? And that's all, you know, fine. But what does that mean for you? What that means for you is that if you hit a bone or cartilage in a deer while it's going through the rib cage, like you hit a rib or something, or what happens if it, like, you know, channels off course and hits the deer's arm, it's going to go right through. Because bone, I would say, is less um, durable than metal or and aluminum. And so that's good to know that you have a broadhead that will pass through cartilage and bone like it's nothing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you found my results helpful. Definitely make sure you stop by Magnus. Tell me what you think of their broadheads. I would love to hear it. I know they would love to hear it as well. Um, in the description below, I put links to the Magnus Broadhead homepage. Please check them out. Let me know what you think. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. And, uh, let, and if you would like to see full copies of my results um, with spreadsheets and all the papers and these very nice pictures here with the graphs and charts, just put a little uh, comment down below saying, hey, I'd like to see um, some of these pictures and stuff. Well, then we can get it so you never have to reveal any private information on public. We can just get that to you. Uh, but definitely, let me know what you think. If you want these results, please tell me. I will get them to you shortly. Thanks again, guys. Again, I hope you found this helpful. God bless. So the Magnus Broadhead can cut 45 times through a deer. That's awesome. And that is really outstanding. But... Please, sir. I want some more. What? 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 Ask for more? So I decided to fire it into some metal. Uh, I fired it into a metal bowl. I fired it into a. Let me try to remember now. Aluminum can, and I fired it into a frying pan, and I fired it into a pressure cooker that had walls of aluminum half of an inch thick. What? 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 Here's what the broadhead looked like after I was done, and I also got a few video clips in there of that whole process. would be an after video, so I left a little bit of the mud on so that you know it's not just some random picture I took. <laughs>